my name is Jane, and I invented a material called Sugru that um, all of you have a sample of in your um, goodie bag, um, so I hope you'll, you'll try it out later. Um, it's um, in contrast a bit to the sort of um, vision of the future that we were hearing just, just before lunch. Um, and I think we all love to think about the future as this sort of perfect um, time where technology is going to do everything for us. Um, but I think we also thought that, you know, back in the 60s, that like now we'd be going around in hovercrafts and stuff. Um, and we still have teapots that don't pour tea into cups, but spill stuff all over the table. And um, smartphones that have libraries in our pockets, but if we let them fall on the floor, they, they break and we can't, can't use them anymore. So I think there's something fascinating about this sort of um, gap between um, what we aspire technology to do for us and actually real life. Um, so this is Sugru. It's um, it's a new material, and I think one of our customers put it put it best when, when they described it as um, if superglue and Play-Doh had a baby, that would be Sugru. <laughs> um, so it's uh, it comes in a pack like this in moisture tight materials because um, it's the moisture that activates it to transform. And so what happens is that when you take it out of the um, foil pack, you can mold it very much like Play-Doh. Um, and into any shape whatsoever, and the magical part is that it will turn overnight into a really durable and flexible silicone rubber. And we make it in lots of colors, and it sticks to almost any material, so it's a really super versatile way to fix things, um, hack things, and make things, um, from uh, stuff like fixing your kids' school shoes, to dishwashers, to sending cameras into space because you've attached something. The projects are super various that people use it for. Um, so this is a solar-powered um, iPhone charger um, that somebody made this summer. Um, we're primarily an online company, and um, all of our growth has come from a community of people that have taken Sugru and um, done stuff with it, and then shared what they've done online to inspire others to be able to fix things. Um, and as I said, it's really super various um, what people do. Um, and all of this sounds really logical and useful, I think, um, now that it exists. But it wasn't always like that. Um, uh, in fact, it started as a, in an extremely bizarre place. Um, I moved to London 12 years ago to study product design at the Royal College of Art. And I came here very sort of like, wow, I got into the Royal College of Art. That's going to be amazing. I'm going to be an amazing product designer. Um, and um, until a few weeks into the course, I realized I was actually extremely rubbish at product design. <laughs> and so I hid myself away in the wood workshop um, making things. And I thought, because I had done sculpture before, I thought maybe I could go back to materials. And maybe that's something I could bring to design. Um, and so one day, for absolutely no particular reason whatsoever, I mixed these two materials together. Um, and 10 minutes later, I, ha I had this ball that looked like wood. Um, 10 minutes later, I came back and I dropped it on the floor and um, it bounced like a ping pong ball. And for me, for some reason, I found this fascinating. <laughs> and I thought, I have to find the purpose for this material in the world. <laughs> Um, and so I spent the next um, weeks and weeks thinking of all these kind of creative ideas. What could this material do? It's amazing. Um, people kind of thought I was quite weird. Um, but I couldn't find anything really, really great to do with it. Um, and I used the leftovers um, just in my kitchen to solve little problems. And that was really the only thing that um, I found that was useful, just um, changing the shape of things, fixing my sink, stuff like that. Um, and I thought I'd failed my project until my boyfriend um, one night actually helped me to see that this was absolute genius. <laughs> what if absolutely anybody could change anything to modify designs, um, to make things bigger, smaller, softer, um, more pink, whatever? Um, what if uh, products were more like um, software where you could make it work for you um, instead of just being the way it is um, when it comes out of the factory? Um, and that really just got my imagination going, and I just thought, yes, that's amazing. Um, I prototyped it and showed it in my final exhibition at, at college, and um, the main two questions were, where can I get it and how much does it cost? Which made me think, wow, I've got to make this real. Um, but of course, I had absolutely no background in science or business or anything, so I didn't... Um, 
really know how to go about it whatsoever. Um, but luckily, I um, was quite persistent, and I managed to meet some people um, in science and in the world of silicones, and also some entrepreneurs who helped me to um, see a route forward. And I um, was very lucky to get a grant when I left college, um, a small grant, thirty-five thousand pounds. And I spent the first five thousand um, pounds because I, I'd imagine this material. Okay, so this would be a space-age rubber that would have all of these properties. And so I thought I would contract out um, to a contract laboratory to make this material for me somehow. Um, I spent the first £5,000 on three experiments. It took three weeks, and I learned absolutely nothing um, from those. And so I realized that if I was going to make this real, I would need to do it myself. Um, so I bought myself a white coat. And, <laughs> um, <laughs> I spent uh, the next £5,000 on building a little laboratory and the next two years mixing little chewing gum pieces like this and going slightly mad, but having a great time at the same time. Um, and uh, so that was my first lesson in actually science actually could be like design or making and whatever, and that you didn't have to be an expert. You can actually learn this stuff. Um, we had trial users using all the samples as we were going, so it took, like, it took a really long time. I can't tell you just like how many days and experiments that involved, but people, friends and family feeding into the de uh, development process to help us along the way. Um, and um, yeah, I guess my vision for it, like I stood up in my college exam and I said, this is a product that is like completely utilitarian. This is about democratizing design. Everybody is going to be using this and it's going to be sold in Tesco. So my vision for this was always something big, that it would be something, um, yeah, like I guess we thought that we would um, develop the science and then license it to a big group who would be able to do this. Uh, sales and marketing of that. Um, and they, those companies were really super interested, and I spent um, the best part of four years actually in discussions with them until I realized um, four years in that they weren't going to put any money on the table. And um, in 2008, after spending four years on it and almost having a working technology, it was uncertain whether that was sort of a waste of time or not um, because we'd run out of money and it was now the recession and nobody was. Uh, giving us any money, um, until a, fr a friend said this to me, and it's the best piece of advice that I've ever had, um, because she said, look, I know your vision for this is big, but like, what if you have just like your 100 people in your trial group, then you, and if it's successful for them, you can grow to 1,000, if it's successful for them, you can grow to 10,000. And that completely changed my thinking um, and made it possible to continue. Um, so I went back um, with a new year, with a new way of thinking, and my friends were encouraging me uh, to think about how we could do this online. And I got really excited about that. And with a change of business plan, I was able to raise a much smaller amount of money, and we gave ourselves six months to um, launch it uh, online. Yeah, so three years ago. Um, and that's when we started to get really excited about it because it wasn't like about when I was developing the science and talking to the big companies, they were telling me like, so you should call it a descriptive name. It should be like this. These are all the rules. And then suddenly thinking, okay, we're going to do this our way was amazing because it was like, you don't have to play by the rules. You can make up your own rules. Um, so Sugar is inspired by the Irish word for play. And that's what it's all about. It's about like, uh, yeah. It's stimulating people's imagination. So it shouldn't look like glue. It should look more like space food. Um, we started bringing, I mean, it's kind of mad to bring a material like that out into music festivals where people just want to get drunk and stuff. But we just started having fun with it and going out to meet the people that we thought would use it. Um, and we built a website which was entirely based around our mission, which is about um, why should people have to buy new things all the time? Uh, when only a small part is broken, they should be able to fix them. And we put that political side to the very front of the brand um, and launched the website. Um, well, not yet. <laughs> There's other stuff to do first, such as making. Um, so yeah, like, you know, taking something from laboratory size to um, something that you want to sell, like lots of, um, how do you do that? So I spoke to quite a few contract manufacturing people and um, tried to uh, do that, but it was basically very complicated and um, took ages to get anything done. 
So we bought a, a small mixing machine that other people use as um, a laboratory mixer. We use it as our production mixer. We designed an extrusion thing to extruder to uh, package our first thousand packs. And we basically just rallied everybody to label things up and make our packs look really nice. We made a thousand packs and um, we sent several of them to journalists and bloggers and stuff when we were ready to launch. Um, but I think people thought it was just really weird and didn't know what to make of it. So we didn't hear back from any of them until a few days before the launch, we heard from one blogger um, at the Daily Telegraph technology blog who phoned up and got us to come down and to make some stuff with him and he reviewed it. And the day of our launch, he gave it a 10 out of 10 uh, review on the Daily Telegraph and um, it just flew around the internet and really captured people's imagination. Um, this is me on the floor in shock because we just sold out our um, first thousand packs in six hours. Um, so for six years in the back room where nobody knowing what we were doing, people actually got excited about it, which was a really amazing feeling. Um, so yeah, that was a bit of a turning point. Um, and then two weeks later, after we um, sold the packs, pictures started coming back. People started sharing their stories of what they had fixed and what they had made online, either with just generally on Facebook and Twitter or sending them to us by email. Um, and three years later, it's just been snowballing since. We get more pictures and stories than ever. Um, and it's, it's really actually phenomenal to, to hear from these people. And um, I think one of the things that people ask a lot is because we've, um, so we've grown in three years, actually I was getting very excited listening to that exponential thing because in three years we have doubled each year the number of mini packs that we've made in the factory. We've made nearly three million mini packs now of Sugru. Imagine if all of, well, I don't think all of them have resulted in repairs, but you know, even if 10% of them had resulted in repairs, that's pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, I, I think a lot of people ask about, well, how, how do you build that sort of community? Like, how do you, like, how have you done that? Like, you know, there's thousands of people like enthusing about Sugar Online. How, how does that happen? Um, and so I thought I'd just share a few reflections on why. Um, one is because um, we really, really believe in what we're doing. Um, Sugru is, a um, little bit like what Jack was saying there, you know, it's not about him making money out of it. This is genuinely about um, a new culture of fixing and making things, and we seriously really believe in it, and so do all the people that use Sugru. So that's number one. Number two, people are just fucking amazing. They just, like, I, I, I'll tell you a few stories now, and you're going to, like, just, it's, it's insane how cool people are. Um, so this, for example, <laughs> this, came, this is a story, like seriously, this is not unusual. I just took this out of the submissions that came in yesterday. Um, so it's from somebody in America that has two turtles that just kept getting lost in their garden. Um, and she couldn't keep, you know, was just like always getting worried about them. So she's hacked um, GPS trackers and these beautiful Sugru, um, beautiful Sugru harnesses so that her turtles will never get lost. Um, this is a camera that um, came from a dad called Stefan um, in Germany who one Saturday, so he wanted to encourage, his, his three-year-old was really into photography and he wanted to be able to encourage him but obviously not let him break the camera. Um, so one Saturday he used his Sugru to build up these really clever little walls on the, on the camera so that he could give this camera and when it would fall on the floor it would bounce instead of breaking. Um, really, really beautiful project. Um, and then sometimes the projects, like, so that's a kind of a creative side, but then um, sometimes the projects are really quite meaningful. So this is a, a lady called Joanne who's um, from Canada, and she's a really amazing canoeist. Um, and she sent us her project, um, which was, um, she wanted to do this uh, really super long canoe race down the Yukon River. It's something like 700 kilometers long, but she only has fingers on one hand. And to be able to canoe for that long, she would need to be able to canoe on both sides using both, both hands. So she just got a friend to help her put a screw into the, into the paddle, and then she molded the sugar around it so that she could get a good solid grip on that. Um, and she sent us these pictures after they had completed the race in three days and three nights of continuous paddling with no sleep. And she said that it was one of the best things she ever did in her life. 
Um, and she wouldn't have been able to do it if she hadn't been able to do that tiny little humble modification on her paddle. Um, so like the smallest things can make, make a difference. And I think the reason that people are so enthusiastic about Sugru is not because it's anything to do with Sugru actually, um, it's because they're really awesome and this helps them be a little bit more awesome at something that they're doing. Um, and then I think the third thing is that it's, um, Sugru is what you make it. Um, I know a lot of you are, um, you know, in creative industries and you'll know the thrill of like, you know, successfully coming up with an idea and implementing it. Um, so yeah, it, uh, just saying about that, just that um, thrill of a creative project, every little one is like that. Um, and I think when you use something, success, when you use your Sugru successfully for something, you do get this sort of amazing feeling of pride and confidence actually. So even if it's fixing your fridge, it's like, I've beaten the system. Um, so that's part of it. Um, and then sometimes we get people asking us, yeah, like, wouldn't it be easier if, you know, because Sugru is quite hard to sell, you know, online not so much, but to describe what Sugru is on retail packaging and to have somebody get it is quite, quite difficult. And people always ask us, yeah, but what's the killer app? What's the killer app? Um, and we've always resisted that and we continue to resist that. And, you know, all of this sort of community stuff and the sort of open source culture of Sugru isn't about getting to like the perfect product. And this really is all about being continually open ended. Um, and it is about designing a culture of repair and a culture of proud fixing and, and making um, and not necessarily about the product at all, actually. Um, and things like this are what help me see that we're sort of getting there. So somebody shared this on Facebook. My four-year-old broke a small toy yesterday and said, it's okay, we've got some Sugru. <laughs> um, and I love that. Like, that it's not a kid that's like, she broke her toy and then she started to cry. It's like, no, I broke my toy and I'm going to fix it. Um, so this is the team back in um, the factory in Hackney. So we've grown from, um, I guess we were two people when we launched and uh, we're 30 something people today. And uh, we're kind of a bit more light industry than cottage industry, but it is still very much a DIY ethos and um, proud to be a UK manufacturing. Cool, that's me.